Well, hello, this is Jeff Gadiosi, and this is another edition of The Blues Fix on MisplacedStraws.com. And my guest today is not only a Blues Hall of Famer and a living link to the bluesmen of the past, but he's still releasing music under his own name and collaborating with some of the young rising talent that represents the future of the blues. He has a new record coming out on November 12th that's filled with special guests, and it's aptly titled Eclectic Electric. Please welcome the one and only Joe Lewis Walker. Welcome, Joe. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Oh, Thanks. my pleasure. And you know, let's start with Eclectic Electric. Um, you had a record out in 2020, Blues Coming On, and then now this one. And your records are always loaded with great guests. I mean, and on this one, you have people like Jimmy Vivino, Morali Coriel, Doyle Bramble II, Waddy Wachtel, Danny Korchmar, and just a host of others. With the pandemic going on, did you have to try to coordinate all of this remotely or were you able to actually play with any of the people? Well, some of these tracks were done uh, three, four, five years ago. Oh. You know, uh, uh, the, 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 the just state, the, the beginning of the tracks, mm -hmm. you know, just the, some of the ideas and, and some of the stuff. So um, a track like Make No Mistake, you know, um, which was old Spencer Wino's song. Um, I, I had uh, talked to the songwriter of that song about recording it in 2013 when mm. we were in Australia, <laughs> you know? So, um, and once I got the okay from Keith and Steve Jordan, uh, pretty much, um, then I started working on that song. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and then you fast forward it to when when the pandemic and all that stuff had actually that song was supposed to be on blues coming on because mm -hmm. that that blues coming on is the record with a lot of guests yes. there's a guest on every that I, I made that record specifically to do that this record um it, it has a few of my friends on here but it wasn't uh uh um that wasn't the gist of this record was to mm -hmm. have a lot of guests, although that's the way it turned, you know, I got friends on it anyway. Yeah. And that's cool. You know, when, when you have a thing like that, it's, mm -hmm. it's organic, it's natural. But um, uh, 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 with, with, to answer your question, some of the songs we had to wait to where we could all be in a studio together, mm -hmm. like World Wolves of London, um, California, mm -hmm. uh, Dance On, you know, those songs, because I wanted us all to be in the studio together. Mostly all the tracks, people, we were all in the studio together. But when we came to guests, uh, it, there's, there's no way that I could have um, been in the studio with Whitey. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's, you know what I mean? There's no way I could have been in the studio with, with Baby Doyle. You know, mm -hmm. I couldn't have done it. You know, mm -hmm. it just, it was it, we couldn't even fly at that time. Mm -hmm. you, you didn't never. So, um, but we did get the music uh, in there and and everything. So, the I'd say the majority of this record was all of us in a room together. You know, mm -hmm. especially me and the band. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the record is you've mentioned a little bit in in that answer. It's a really cool mix of your original material and, and totally new arrangements of classic tracks. Now, starting basically with the original material on here, some of these songs, as you said, go back three, four, five years. Are you the type, are you always writing something so that you're picking and choosing, or do you write for specific projects? Well, actually, I do both. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if something, if there's a, a, an idea in my mind or some, what I do is, I'm real high tech. I'll get on voicemail and I'll, I'll do a demo. <laughs> just me, you know, and if it sounds pretty good, just me playing the guitar on the demo and I can I can get a feeling of some energy coming off, then I, I might, you know, keep dibbling and dabbling with that idea or keep dibbling and dabbling mm -hmm. with the, my idea of an arrangement of another song. Mm -hmm. And and then if it sticks with me, cool. I, I'm, you know, I, I'm feeling like, okay, okay I, I, there, there's something here. But I don't necessarily have to have a, a project to write songs because mm -hmm. because I have a lot of people that I, I work with sometime and and you know I spend a lot of time you know at home with the guitar in my hand you mm -hmm. know and like somebody said you know 
if I got to hold a guitar in my hand, why not write a song sometimes, <laughs> you know? So, so that, that's basically the way I look. There, there's no rhyme or reason with me, yeah. you know? It, you know, the record it lives up to its name though with the covers and you briefly mentioned them you know make no mistake from keith richards and the expensive winos you know hotel california werewolves of london all she wants to do is dance but the arrangements on them are just so cool and so different from what everyone would expect how do you come up with unique arrangements for those classic songs well you know i i i, I with make no mistake, I had to flip it around, you know, because when I talked to the Keith about it, you know, he always, he, he's like, I've done four or five of his songs, you know, and he said, you know, always says the same thing, make it your own, make it your own, <laughs> Joe, make it your own, because that's what they did, that's what they did when they yeah. covered songs yeah. coming up, you know, I mean, if you expected a, 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 a note for note cover of them doing the song, you wasn't gonna get it. Mm -hmm. And it, as it should be, you should put yourself into right. it. So that's what I did. Uh, that's what I did with all these songs. But make no mistake, I had to take the chorus. I took what was a chorus, which doesn't come until late in the song. I put the chorus at the beginning of the song, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just to flip it on its head mm -hmm. because it's a great, it's a great guitar lick. <laughs> well, look who yeah. wrote it, Keith, yeah, exactly. you know. <laughs> <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't very complicated, but when you put it all together, mm -hmm. it's, you know, he it, it puts a lot of thought into his music, right. a lot of thought. And, and so um, I was able to do that with, with, with Werewolves. It was a no brainer. It was just like, let's just make it funky. This is and you funky did. as we can yeah. make it. Yeah. And the band, the band really, you know, the guys came and said, hey man, check this out, Joe. When they did that, I said, oh man, I can put my vocal on top of this. And when we do the, when we do the backgrounds, it'll be a different thing, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so we were able, and then when I, when I got Waddy to uh, put the, put the loud on it, because we call that when, when Waddy plays guitar, we call <laughs> it the loud. And we put the loud on it. It was like, okay, we got two different things meeting mm -hmm. in the middle. We got the funky stuff that I'm playing on the guitar and singing, the background singers and, and the bass and it's, it's funky. It, it's like it, it, it's like James Brown meets Warren Zevon in a way, mm -hmm. or the mm -hmm. Isley Brothers meets Warren Zevon with the backgrounds on. And then you put Waddy in there, and then you get you get the loud, you get the yeah. slide guitar, you get the you get the you get the rocking, you know. Mm -hmm. And so when you mix it together, it worked. I mean, it's the same with Cotchmore's song. You, you know, it was like. Um, you know, Koch was gonna play on the song, but then the 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 pandemic just started. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't know you couldn't even buy a plane ticket to know whether you were gonna take off or not. So yeah. that it just didn't work. You know, but uh, he's there in spirit. Um, the outlier, the big outlier was uh, Hotel California because mm -hmm. I wanted an iconic song that I, I want. I wanted everybody to just look at it and say, "Oh my God, no!" He didn't. Is that that That's hotel exactly Cali, what I Cali, did. <laughs> that Hotel Cali, Cali what? You know, well, you know, I got a connection with that song. I'm mm -hmm. from California. I'm from San Francisco. I know a lot of the places he's talking about. I know mm -hmm. a lot of the stuff that, 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 that you know, they're, they're, they're referencing, mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> it's like when the average person sees a record that says Joshua Tree, it may mean something else. Mm -hmm. That means to guys like us from California, because mm -hmm. we know, number one, it's one of the greatest uh, national force in the world, but people do go there and they do all kind of crazy stuff, you know. So, so we know <laughs> it means something. So, mm -hmm. I said, well, you know what? Let's just make California Hotel California like sort of give it a little bit of a reggae lilt with a whole lot of soul, mm -hmm. and and it's known as a guitar extravaganza. Yeah. I don't want to do that. You can't. I can't do that. Mm -hmm. No better than, than Joe Walsh. And, mm -hmm. and then did it. I can't do it. We'll touch on it a little bit. That's why I brought Morale in because Morale plays most of that Joe Watt mm -hmm. stuff. I play the legato guitar, you know, just bending notes. And, and yeah. so it's a foil to what he's and Morale did an excellent job. He's just a great musician. Yeah. And and so um, I, I think the big thing, you know, when I played it for my friends and everybody, everybody just said, you know, now we can sort of concentrate on the lyrics because we were all lyrics because we were always waiting for the guitars to come mm -hmm. come in. And I say, well, yeah, because it, it's just a, a it, it's like a baby, a little movie. 
It's it's yeah. like a and, and you know it's sort of like a little seedy movie too. You know, <laughs> it, it really yeah. is when you get oh, into totally. it, you, it's this total Southern California seedy kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, you walk into a hotel and some guy's looking at you saying, "You can check in, but you sure as hell ain't checking out." <laughs> you know, you ain't checking out the way you check in. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and we all been in that hotel. That was the whole Chateau Marmont. Yeah, and and, and, and you know. That's where Janis Joplin died, you mm -hmm. know, but all kind of stuff used to go there, you know, mm -hmm. and so um, I used to hang out there, you know, back in mm -hmm. the day, you yeah. know, so uh, that was, the, that was the gist for the, um, the uh, 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 cover songs. Yeah, and I think one of the standout original tracks for me was Regal Blues, your, your tribute uh, to B.B. King, and what was your relationship with B.B. like? Well, I mean, um, you know, B.B. was just a special person. Uh, I, it, it, so much has been said about B.B. that, you know, but as far as me personally, um, B.B. always had a way of popping up in my life when I really needed some <laughs> <laughs> some support <laughs> in more ways than one, believe yeah. me. But um, I, I was fortunate enough to get, to get to know him very good from the 80s, the 90s, 2000s. I got a picture, me and him got a picture in every decade since the mm -hmm. 80s. You know, um, in the 80s, um, when I came back to playing blues from gospel, he was kind enough to let me open up for him. And say, I, he knew me from when I lived with a guy named Mike Bloomfield in the mm -hmm. 1960s. So he knew me from then, you know, cause Michael was talking about me and he knew me and, and, and he knew about me. So, um, and he never forgot anything, you know, mm -hmm. he just like, a, you know, so uh, with, with BB, he would, uh, you know, pull me to the side, you know, and, and work with me, you know, like Joe, you know, your, your diction, make sure your diction is spot on. He says, I, one thing I like about your music, I can understand every word you say. Mm -hmm. He says, work on your diction, you know, uh, along with your intonation when you're singing, you know, uh, do, do your best, um, you know, uh, don't get discouraged because your friends are having big hit records and you're not. He mm -hmm. says, you know, when I was playing, he says, Joe, you, you were there for the old film auditorium. I, you were there when Muddy Waters and Holland Wolf and James Cotton and all those guys were playing there and B.B. King was not playing there. Mm -hmm. and we all wondered why, why, why the king of the blues, one of the kings of the blues playing. Yeah. And evidently Bill Graham for whatever, but Mike Bloomfield convinced Bill Graham to hire B.B. there and, and the rest is history. Because yeah. B.B. because B.B. had been playing there anyway years before when it was African-American owned the film out of time anyway, because I know because I went to junior high school a half a block from there. Yeah. So I remember the Fillmore when it was our community playhouse. We used to have our Battle of the Bands there. And then when the, when the hippies came and Bill Graham game came, things sort of changed and morphed into uh, something else. And, and I was there for that. And, and that was cool. And, and then uh, afterwards. So but B.B. was always kind of me and he would call me. Um, just, I, I'll give you one story about B.B. Sure. King that, that, that just transcends. I, I don't know if you remember the, um, the earthquake in 1989, they call mm -hmm. it, I think sure. it was Loma Prieta. In fact, nobody can forget it because the World Series. Yeah, during the World Series. Okay. Yes. Well, I was at home. I, I mm -hmm. was at home in San Francisco then. Um, and it just so happened that the house that I was leasing was I leased it from the city planner. So this guy was a smart guy. He literally had metal rods going through that whole house. So when the, when the, when the earthquake was doing this, my place just did like this once or twice, yeah. that was it. And so I was in heaven, I'm like, oh, but then I'm thinking, oh man, my mom's down there, my sister's over there. There's a fire down there and just taking over the marina. All the, all the, um, the, the traffic lights are out. So people are scrambling buildings are leaning over it was pretty scary but um to make a long story short the telephone lines weren't working mm -hmm. okay the next morning after the loma prieta earthquake my phone rings I'm like, wait, wait a minute <laughs> i know the phones are out <laughs> but evidently some phones at work mm -hmm. i get i pick up the phone operator says mr walker dear Dear, what are you? He says, this is Australia calling. Can you hold for a minute? 
uh, Joe, son, it's me, B. I want you to go call Carlos Santana, call a uh, so-and-so, go check on so-and-so, <laughs> go check on, oh, and how you doing? I'm like, you mean to tell me you called me all the way from Australia to see how I'm doing? <laughs> he, says, yeah. he says, yeah, but I got to tell you, son, I called a lot of people. You're one of the few I was able to reach. I said, it's probably because I'm living in a house that was made by the city planner, <laughs> you know? And he says, well, since you, he says, well, now you're my city planner. I want you to get in touch with that people. So I had to call all these people. But of course, I couldn't reach them, yeah. you know? But when I could, I did. I got in touch with Carlos and, and I got yeah. in touch with Saunders King and, and different people, uh, you know, for him. But that's the kind of person he is. Mm -hmm. He was. And, yeah. and, that, and I don't think you know, when, when I've been around a lot of people that are, that are known in the business, and you you when you've done interviews, mm -hmm. you you know when someone is you know is you know putting on their best you know yeah. behavior, blah 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 blah, and yeah, <laughs> but he was he was like that with everybody all the time, yeah, and uh, it really was not lost on me mm -hmm. that uh, he was. Only it, it could not have been anybody else but him to do what he did. Yeah. Like just just to snap something out of the air, to do the collaboration with you two. It, mm -hmm. it couldn't have been Muddy Waters. As much as I love Muddy Waters, yeah. it couldn't have been Holland Wolf. Holland Wolf did a great thing with the Rolling Stones when mm -hmm. they were on Shindig TV together. Mm -hmm. You know, but they, you know, I mean that was great. But it, only BB could have taken that. And and I love to tell everybody, as far as I'm concerned what bb king did for me and all the blues guys like me mm -hmm. buddy guy kenny neal mm -hmm. billy branch uh, chris stone king what he did for us he took us from the outhouse to the penthouse mm -hmm. in other words he did for us what muhammad ali did for african-american boxers yeah he made it so that we could have some sort of uh uh uh, uh upward mobility Mm -hmm. um it, it wasn't just you know dim day da do da da you know uh when you heard a bb king song you know it was the thrill is gone the thrill, you could understand mm -hmm. every freaking lyric okay it wasn't like even though he was from he was from hard time mississippi mm -hmm. he didn't talk like that and he didn't act like that mm -hmm. and that 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 crossed every genre i mean i've been on shows where the band was me and Herbie Hancock, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 Dwayne Shorter, uh, 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 Bono, Edge standing right next. All of us were there because of BB. You know, all of us giving, yeah. giving giving credit to him, playing with him, and we all just looked at each other and said, "Man, this guy has touched every freaking one of us." Yeah. And you know what? It, it gets emotional when you really start thinking about it. How many people you know have done that? Yeah, not a whole I mean, lot. Really, not yeah. a whole lot, bro. It, just not a whole lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that's that's one of my BB stories. Yeah. It, so one of the people you mentioned in that answer um, was the amazing Mike Bloomfield, who you knew very well. And I don't know if it's because we lost him so young and such a long time ago, but it almost feels like he's just become so underrated and not thought of as much anymore. I mean, what's your take on just the the genius that was Mike Bloomfield when you knew him? Well, it, it's like a quasar. Hmm. You know, it, it burned real bright. Yeah. And it wasn't like Michael got to be a worse musician. In fact, he got to be a better musician. Mm -hmm. And he got to be a pretty good singer, too. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Michael never did buy into the music industry. It just was, I, I, I think the, the, the number, the, the, the best um, uh, uh, wording for, for Michael's uh, uh, um, philosophy was uh, uh, what was on a t-shirt that Hunter S. Thompson put out. And it said, the t-shirt said this, the hallways of the music business are lined with thieves, murderers, and pimps. And then there's the downside. <laughs> and, I, and I know for a fact 
that that was that was Michael's experience as he saw it happening to the people that he respected, as he saw it when he would just play not so great and people going mad and people putting contracts in front of him for a hundred thousand mm. dollars. And he said, for what? For, for something I was just tuning up. I wasn't mm. even playing. You know, well, it, and it, you know, he just didn't like the hype. He didn't. Mm. And so what Michael did, I think that he he sort of um backed away from it, you know, and even when he didn't want to do it, like they got an album called Super Session. Yep. I mean, he didn't he didn't know that record was gonna be let out. Mm. That's why he's not on side B. He went home. When when Al Cooper, when they told him, hey, yeah. this is gonna be a real record, he was like, hey man, I the record, I just thought we was coming in jamming. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, and so Michael left and just so happened Steven Stills was next door and I guess Al got him, mm -hmm. Cooper got him to finish the record. But I, I'll be honest, I like Steven Stills with Crosby Stills and Nash yeah. and, 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 and Buffalo Springfield, but mm -hmm. I couldn't tell you anything he played on the second side of the record. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody can. Because Bloomfield just ate it yeah. up on the first side of the record. Side one's amazing. Yeah, it, it just yes. it's it's and you know he he was like that. You know, um, it was just I, I just always say it's if you want to get a, an idea of how great a musician he really was and and just how he fell without a net. Uh, mm -hmm. There's the first Paul Butterfield blues album, yeah, which turned what it turned forty the other day. Mm -hmm. um, there's a song at the end of the first side called Mellow Down Easy, mm. where he just flat out takes off. And I tell all guitar players, don't try this at home because you can't do it. No <laughs> pedals. OK, yeah. no pedals. Mm. Number one, um, no bum notes because he resolves wherever he's going to. Mm -hmm. So when when you got and, and that was just a little capsule of what he was going to do with the next record, East West, mm -hmm. where they're playing, where he's experimenting a big part of the record. And that was a big hit record. Um, I just always felt like um, it's some people that I knew in this business that I, I the only way I can put it, I, I just thought they were too good for the business. Mm -hmm. And that was Michael and Jimi Hendrix. I just yeah. thought they were the nicest guys in the world. And they could be, you know, they, they, of course, they, they weren't, you know, uh, a little walk in the park. They had to be adamant because they were the first in, in their, you know, in what they did. They really mm -hmm. were, you know. Um, a lot of people don't know that, that, you know, that, that they say, well, which record came out first, the, blue, the Blues Breakers record in England featuring another guitar player or um, the, the Butterfield first yeah. record. Well, at pretty sure the Butterfield first record came, but all those guys, Butterfield and Bloomfield, Elvin mm -hmm. Bishop, and they had mentors in Chicago. Yeah, You know, Michael's mentor was Muddy Waters and, and, and Howard Wolfman. Paul Butterfield's mentor was Junior Wells. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 um, Elvin Bishop's mentor was Little Smoky Smothers. Mm -hmm. The English guys, most of them learned their blues off of a record. Mm -hmm. Most of them did, until they start coming over. Like the Stones came over and they cut um, uh, 12 times five, mm -hmm. which had their number one biggest hit, the Bobby Womack song, It's All Over Now. Mm -hmm. They cut that at Chess Studios, where yeah. Muddy Waters cut, you know, Manage mm -hmm. Boy, where Bo Diddley cut I'm a Man, where Howlin' Wolf cut mm -hmm. the first Little Red Rooster, mm -hmm. you know? So the Stones, I always said all the English guys I know were really smart. Mm -hmm. They came over and they weren't in competition with Americans. I've never heard an English guy say, who's the king of rock and roll? They don't get caught up in it. Yeah. it, it it's just, it's, you know, it, it, it's a rabbit hole. Mm -hmm. They came over to, to say, hey, we, we just love the music mm -hmm. and we want to be a part of it, you know? And that goes from the Beatles on down to anybody you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, in, so when they came over, a lot of the blues guys liked that because like Muddy said, it, it took my boys from England to show the America, my own people who I am. Because, mm -hmm. you know, we all know that, that the Stones and them brought blues back to the United States. Mm -hmm. We all know that the Beatles been brought Chuck Berry and them back. You mm -hmm. know, I mean, really, uh, uh, it wasn't the Beach Boys. It was the Beatles, right. you know, and, and the Stones. And, 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 and during the pacemakers doing Maybelline and mm -hmm. on and on and on. That was a rite of passage for all those mm -hmm. guys. They didn't get caught up with who was the king of rock and roll. Mm -hmm. They didn't get caught up in the interracial stuff. 
most of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they didn't get caught up any of that because the music spoke to them because they they didn't have a silver spoon. Mm-hmm. What? I don't think any of those guys were rich. Yeah. I don't think any of those guys had, you know, the best equipment. I mean, mm-hmm. read, read, you know, so they were just glad to be over, you know, come mm-hmm. over and, and you know, uh, drink, uh, drink, drink at the fountain, so to speak. And you know, with your career, you played with all of those legends and you learned from them. Uh, but you're you're one that passes it on to the next generation. I mean, I know last year you did some amazing work with Eliza Neal's on her Black Crow Moan record, which I absolutely love. You know, what's it like for you now at this point in your career to be working with newer people and up and coming people who you see as the future of the blues? Well, you know, I I, I think I, I'm glad that that a, a lot of people who are a little bit younger than myself that that they can feel that essence of the blues, they can express themselves in it. You mm-hmm. know, w- what they don't have to do, you you don't have to try to play exactly like someone else right. or, or exactly, you know, you, you don't have to fit into that one, that, that, that one, four, five progression all the time. You can mm-hmm. stretch it out. You can put a little, little jazzier in it, a little funkier in it, a little, little reggae. You can do things with it because that's what all the great guys did anyway in the genre. So I'm, 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 I'm proud to see people like, you know, Chris Stone and, and and Vanessa Collier mm-hmm. and Morali Coyell and, and, and Eliza Neals and 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 um uh, uh all, all those young people that I, I know uh really uh, uh stretch it out a little bit you know because they're all um it, it's as you know uh, they, they've lived through the music business just morphing 360 degrees. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I put it like this, but the Somalian pirates might as well run the music business now. <laughs> it, it makes Hunter Hunter S. Thompson's saying look like, you know, the church on Sunday. Yeah. You just don't, you know, you it's you, you better do this because you love it. Yeah. You know, and, and and all those young people love it, you know. Yeah. And and, and I, I think more power to them. If I can ever help them, um, I'm usually there. That, that's awesome. And we've been spending some time here with just the amazing Joe Lewis Walker. Uh, the record is called Eclectic Electric. It's out everywhere November 12th. I highly recommend it. If nothing else, it's a fun record. And at the end of the day, that that's what it needs to be. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, that, that's and, what we're looking for. And the singles out today, the single came out to yesterday oh, and today. Yeah. Uh, Werewolves of London with my, my brother, Whitey Wattell, on there yeah. with me, who co-wrote the song. And we let it out for uh, Thanksgiving so everybody could go out. <laughs> yeah. And if you want to okay. see us, if you want to see us, you can look at joelewiswalker.com. We're, we're going on tour um, uh, next month, uh, different places on, on the east and the Midwest, Chicago, wow. Minneapolis, uh, Cleveland, mm-hmm. uh, and near Pittsburgh. And uh, tomorrow night we're having a record release party at the Cutting Room in New York City. Oh, nice. We're going to have our guests, people who are on the record. The great Betty Smith uh, is going to be there. Um, Morali Coryell, yeah. um, uh, the great Tash Neal, my friend, is going to be there yeah. with us. So Eric Finland. So we're going to have a lot of fun tomorrow night. That's awesome. Like I said, I'm up here in Connecticut, so we look forward to you hitting the Northeast, and we'll definitely be there to check you out. So, Joe, I can't thank you enough for the time you've taken today. It's been amazing. We'll definitely do this again. Hope to catch you on the road soon. Thank you very much. Uh, sure enough. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Bye.